You've just slid in live to the center of the sexy universe. That's right, we're red hot and romantic. That's right guys, it's all about that special lady in your life, that special someone you want to spend a little time with, the one you want to cook with, the one you want to get hot and make some love gravy with. And I'm going to help you kickstart your mojo in the backyard today, showing you how to make some fine wine. And when we come back, we'll be writing poetry. There once was a man from Nantucket. To the grill. Okay, guys, come here, come here. Let's have a little power over here. Let's get right down to brass tacks, okay? Why are we doing this, okay? Romance? Okay, hey, you're a romantic guy. Not. Okay, what are we looking for? We're looking to get a little later on tonight, right? Okay, you got the woman coming over. What do we gotta do? We gotta impress her. We gotta let her know that she is number one in our hearts tonight, right? Okay, so how do we go about doing this? Well, we have to convince them that you're willing to spend so much of your time, so much of your energy preparing something so special for them that they think they have you trapped. Ouch. Bottom line, it's a double fold reversal play. You understand what I'm saying? They think they got you, but you really got them, but later on they actually have you. Mm -hmm. So let's just get down to it, okay? We're gonna start deboning some quail. Ashley, you ever seen a hot seat? Oh yeah. Oh, oh. It. Okay guys, we're gonna debone this quail. You know why? Because women are gonna eat this and it's very delicate, but it's gonna be very messy. You got a bunch of ribs in there, they're gonna be sucking on these ribs. You're, you're gonna like it, but they're not gonna like it much themselves. I say, I say, I say, I say we're gonna take the bones out, okay? Come on in here. Come on, what are you, shy? Come on, it's just a bird. Okay, gonna cut down here. I'm gonna separate the breast from the backbone, just like when you're doing a chicken, right? Just like when you're doing a chicken. People are crazy. This is very delicate. Normally what you would do is you'd use a scalpel, right? And uh, I'd be very worried about any of you if you actually have a scalpel at home. <laughs> Use a very sharp paring knife. Straight down here. Hey, what does that look like? <laughs> I'm really not sorry. This method that we're doing, actually the name of this dish, is gonna be Beaujolais Marinated Quail Crapaudine. Okay, which means we're gonna flatten this quail out. Crapaudine refers to in the manner of a flattened toad. Like when you run over a toad on the road, that's what this is supposed to look like. A boneless toad, which I understand are the best kinds of toads. Okay, so we've almost got this off here. You can tell by its breathing. Separate this bone, the thigh bone from the backbone. We're almost there. Bingo. Got the back done. Remove the scapula. I'm getting very clinical here, aren't we? I liked it. Take this up. And we got the neck off. There we go, guys. We've got a deboned quail. When we come back, we're skewering it up, and then we're going to delve a little bit further into the female psyche. Woman's work is never done, huh? <laughs> The art of winemaking is ancient, and the process itself, addictive. In fact, once you start making wine and exchanging it with your friends, you'll probably find it pretty hard not to have a couple of batches going at once. Today I have John, and he's from the brew shop. He's a winemaker, and he's going to give us a couple hints on how to make a great batch of wine. It's all about the meat. Okay guys, we're going to continue on with our quail in a minute, but first what we want to do is we want to make a little bit of an accompaniment for this. I'm going to show you how to make a braised red cabbage. This is a very cool dish. It's fantastic with the gamey kind of, of uh, poultry that we're working with, right? Okay, this is a red cabbage. Very thick leaves, probably the least sweet of all the cabbages, but it's ideally suited for braising, which means long, slow, moist cooking. <sighs> we're going to use about half a cabbage for this. Cut it straight in half. Like so, I'm gonna take the heart out of it. There, we don't want that, that's way too tough to eat, okay? Then, cut very thin julienne strips, right? And add an onion as well, we've got half an onion, and we're gonna slice it up just the same way, okay? 
Okay guys, a little bit of oil, get that happening in the pot. Okay, boom. Onions in first because we're trying to extract the flavor out of them before we actually cook up the cabbage. So you can put the cabbage on top, the onions are still going to saute underneath, but just don't stir the pot for a few minutes. Okay? Well that's hanging out there, I'm going to chop up some garlic to throw in as well. This garlic doesn't have to be sauteed, okay? This is going to be cooking for a long period of time, which is what happens when you braise, okay? I'm going to squash them down a bit, like so. I'm squishing these down because it's going to increase the surface area of the garlic and make it easier to chop fine, okay? So we go through this, take one pass over it, watch your fingers, okay? Keep your knife pointing away from the tips of your fingers. Keep your fingers curled under and you won't take the tips off. Squish it down again and chop. Using this hand as the fulcrum. You can just rock it up and down. It's easy. Okay, that's fine enough, okay? Doesn't have to be super fine for this recipe. Straight in. And we're going to stir it around just a bit now. Not too much. Just move it around so it's not getting too brown in any one place. Okay, while this continues to saute, let's marinate up these little critters that we just uh, took apart, okay? Okay, we got a bowl. We got four cups of Beaujolais red wine, a very fruity wine from France, from the Beaujolais region. Fruity, but manly, yes, okay. Well, don't look at me like that, it is. To that, we're gonna add some peppercorns, okay? Whole peppercorns, toss them right in. That's about two or three tablespoons. We got some honey, 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 okay, you got it? Let's just scoop this out of the bowl. This is going to add a little bit of sweet to the marinade, so when this thing hits the grill, when these quails hit the grill, that is, they're going to caramelize up nicely. And to that, we're also going to add a sprig of rosemary. And what we're going to do is just like run your hand down the shaft like that. Very cool. Put this over here. Grab one of our fellows here. We're going to make a hole on one side here. We're going to make a hole on the other side here. Poke your cinnamon through into the drink. That's plenty for now. Let's give this stuff a stir over here. At this point, it's about time to add the moisture I was talking about, which actually makes it a braise. Got some chicken stock. I'm going to add about half of this in now. We have four cups there. Okay. We got some orange juice way over here. I don't know why it's here, but it is. Straight in. Two cups of orange juice. This is going to add a little bit of sweet to the cabbage as well, because you know, cabbage on its own, it's fairly bland. It's got a bit of a woody flavor, and we need to soften it up and make it a little bit sweeter at the same time. This is going to be fantastic when it comes out. Okay? And at this point, you add a little bit more chicken stock just until it's covered. Which, that's about perfect, okay? A little bit of salt, not too much. So we're going to put the lid on this. And we're going to start with our wild rice. This here, my friends, is wild rice. You're over there, okay? Take a look at that. It's not actually rice, it's actually a, a seed of a grass, of an aquatic grass from Canada mostly, okay? Northern Ontario, those kind of areas, uh, Manitoba. Straight into the water, and we're going to cook that. That's probably going to take at least an hour to cook. We're moving on, okay. I'm going to throw in some of these apples in here, okay? Because I forgot to tell you about those earlier. You don't need to saute them up because, well, because I told you, okay? This is going to add a little bit more sweetness in here as well. We got a sachet bag, we got cinnamon, allspice, and juniper berries from the juniper tree, the big evergreen tree that's gonna make this taste so fantastic, you won't believe it. Come on back, we're making a sauce. We're making a raisin sauce that's gonna pull this whole mess together. You're not gonna believe it if you do. Come on back, okay? We're back and we're learning about the art of wine with John from the brew shop. So tell us about the two different processes in making wine. Well, uh, actually there's one process, but you can start with two different things. You're, you're starting with grapes, but the, by and large these days, grapes are available in a concentrate form, in a kit. Okay. Um, the newer event, uh, at least in some parts of the country, is that now uh, freshly pressed juice, kept refrigerated, is, is quite readily available. And that's better, obviously, it's alive and uh, fresher. Alright, so let's get right down to it, and how about you teach us how to properly make wine. You're starting off, if you're starting off with fresh grape, you just open the, the container and uh, don't look inside, it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the container is, uh, has fresh juice, you're just going to instill a, uh, a, a cultivated yeast which will compete with the wild ones on the grape skins naturally. Okay. Have that develop a good strong fermentation for three to five days. Transfer that then into your airless or, or small mouth carboy 
and put in an airlock. That ferments again for about uh, two weeks, give or take a week. And once I have it actually in the bottle, how much longer do I have to wait? All wines age, uh, improve with age, um, some more so than others. It's, it depends on the grape type used. And uh, so uh, a few can be drunk quite early. A Riesling uh, is quite, quite pleasant after about a month of aging. Uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon here, probably you want to give it three months to a, a year. By making your own wine, you're saving large dough. Okay. <laughs> you have your hand on a five-year-old Chardonnay there, which cost us about $25. And then I have a fresh juice Chardonnay I made for $2. And um, I think the pride you have in making it, uh, making a, a wine every bit as good as a $25 bottle for $2, uh, uh, that's the whole subject of this exercise. Every time you, you do this, you're making about 30 bottles, and, and surely one or two bottles is going to survive for a few months. Just remember, boys, garbage in, garbage out. You don't want to skimp on this one. You want to invest in a quality wine kit so that you have a nice batch of wine to impress the ladies. It's all about fun. You're in a caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. From Hamburg to Jorburg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot and Ready. Okay, so we've gone through the regular process of making wine, but there are a couple of different little variations. Why don't you tell us about them? Well, some variations would be uh, bottling the wine while it's still fermenting. Uh, enhancing that, you, you wind up with a champagne-style wine. Okay. Or add some fruit to the wine, give yourself a, a mist, uh, mist wine. They're very popular these days. Um, have that bottled while it's still fermenting, and you have a cooler. Uh, another popular type of thing, you can, the sky's the limit. Okay, thanks John for visiting us from the brew shop. You're very welcome. And you've heard it here first, you can make wine from water. Okay guys, we're back. We're back doing our raisin shallot sauce, as promised, okay? This is the element that's gonna tie this whole meal together, man. What we have to do is we have to take about a half a cup of red wine. We're gonna dump that right into our pot, okay? We're gonna reduce this down, okay? By that, I mean we're going to boil it until half the liquid is gone. It's going to intensify the flavors, and it's going to flavor this sauce fantastically, okay? We're using the same red wine in this sauce that we used in the marinades, so that's a good rule of thumb, you know? You want to have the same flavors uh, interacting with each other. We just throw in a couple tablespoons of shallots and about a half a tablespoon of chopped garlic. We're going to let that reduce down just for a few minutes, and while we're doing that, I'm going to move on to making our pistachio and wild rice pancakes, okay? We got some pistachios there, out of the shell, but we're gonna have to bust them down a little bit, right? They've been acting up a bit, so. Play ball! Okay. I think he's had enough. Yeah, I heard an uncle. Dump this straight into the bowl. And we're gonna add the rest of our dry ingredients, okay? We're gonna take a cup and a half of cooked wild rice that we did inside. One and a half. We're gonna take a half a cup of rice flour. This is just ground rice. You can use wild rice or regular rice. That goes straight in. Got a half a cup of regular all-purpose flour. That's good enough. Into there. We got a tablespoon of baking powder. This is gonna allow it to rise, okay? When the heat hits it, it activates it with the moisture brings everything up. Okay, check this out. Our reduction's getting down nicely, okay? At this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some raisins. These are golden sultana raisins. Two cups of chicken stock. A little crack of black pepper. Okay, we'll continue with our pancakes here. We have to have two whole eggs. And a goodly amount of salt, okay? That's like about a teaspoon and a half. Grab a wooden spoon. Let's give it a little turn. That looks great. The pistachios and the wild rice can be fantastic together. Pistachios obviously have a nutty flavor, but so does the wild rice. So really earthy, kind of musty. It's just gonna be a real beautiful balance of sort of nutty flavors. Nuts, rice, together? Are you crazy? I don't know. Dump this straight out onto the board. As you can see, that's pretty, uh, pretty homogeneous. Slide it over, take a little piece off. I'm going to add a little bit of flour to the board just so things aren't sticking. 
There we go. We'll make them about half an inch, three quarters of an inch thick, roughly. Okay, let's add a little bit of oil to our non-stick pan here, okay? And crank the heat up on our sauce, because we have to reduce that down again by a half as well. Okay, let's pop one of these puppies in and see what happens. Robert, you all set? See? And the pistachio and wild rice pancake traveled many miles across the plains to the great desert where he thought he saw a mirage. He was wrong. He was in the pan, he was frying, and it was good. And word went out to all corners of the earth that the pancakes were good. Ooh, boy. Okay, I'm gonna switch positions on this, get a little more heat under these boys. Okay, these are gonna take about five minutes or so to cook. This is gonna take another 10 minutes to reduce, so I'm just gonna go inside, use the bathroom. If you wanna come along, you come along. I was kidding. <laughs> Okay guys, we're back. We're almost there. Our braised cabbages are happening. You now we got our sauce, it's, it's been reduced. We got our pancakes are popping. Okay, let's get these babies on the grill, okay? Got our skewered. Oh, this guy's come off a skewer. You know, it's funny, you take the rib cage out of him, you figure the fight is gone, you know? But apparently not. Just gonna grease them down a bit. A little bit of uh, salt. Straight on the grill. Got to watch these things carefully. They're not going to take long at all, okay? A little grease, oil that is, salt on the grill. And one last, but not least, salt it and on the grill, okay? We're making grilled peaches with a bourbon cream sauce, okay? First thing we have to do is caramelize our sugar. See, we've added sugar to a little bit of a warm pan, adding a little bit of water just to help dilute it. And I gotta stress, you gotta be very careful when caramelizing sugar, okay? Because this stuff gets up to around 400 degrees at least, okay? Uh, roughly 400 degrees. And if it gets stuck on you, it's like melted plastic, man. It is unforgiving and it hurts, okay? Use a wooden spoon when doing this. And if you find that it's crystallizing on you, you can take a bit of a wet brush and just brush the side of the, uh, the sides of the pot to push it down. But I think this is gonna be okay. I'm just gonna let this, uh, let's just chug away for a couple seconds and we're gonna get our peaches onto the grill. That's mint. These are peaches. That's a grill. And this is the bowl that the peaches go into before they go on the grill. I'm gonna put a little bit of plain veg oil on these, okay? We don't want olive oil because it's got too strong a flavor. Basically, we're just gonna put enough on here that they're not gonna stick to the grill. There is a fair amount of sugar in a peach, so that's gonna start burning on the grill very fast. Okay, we're gonna slide these babies onto the grill. Flush side down, okay? That's nice. These won't take that long. You don't have to cook them through that far. It's up to you, really. You know, the longer you put them on, the sweeter they're gonna get because of the caramelization. Okay, give these guys another turn to get that nice 90 degree grill mark pattern we like so much. Okay, these guys are very, very close. I'm gonna shut this down just for a minute. Beautiful. Take a look at our uh, caramel here. See, what we have to do is make sure when it starts getting brown on the edges, you incorporate that back into the rest of the caramel. Otherwise, you're gonna have one little burnt part that's gonna flavor the rest of it. The rest won't be dark enough, and, uh, but it'll still have a burnt flavor. Give these babies a quick flip again, and this will be the last time we turn these, okay? And you can, I can smell the, uh, the cinnamon skewers out beyond these just giving off so much aroma, it's incredible, man. I'm starting to get a woody. <gasps> this is fantastic. Okay, there we are. We've got that lovely caramel color happening here. And we're very, very close. How close are we, Robert? Very close. That's right. Let's pull this back now. Okay, Robert, you might want to watch your, uh, watch your bits, man. See that stuff spitting up there? That's lava, man. And this here is about three ounces of bourbon because peaches and caramel love bourbon, man. Okay, we can put this back on the heat, crank it up. And what's happened is that we've, the caramel has become a little bit gummy here, okay? That's okay. Once the boo starts boiling, it's gonna reincorporate. And that's gonna reduce. And I tell you, man, this is gonna be an amazing dessert. Between the peaches and the booze and the quail and the pancakes, man, tonight is gonna be something to put down 
I'll probably put down a video with any luck, right? Three, two, one. Look at that, beautiful grill marks in the peaches. The color is something else too. Okay, let's get these babies off here. Just gonna let them rest for a few minutes. Okay, this is coming down here. We're gonna add two cups of heavy cream. And once again, we're gonna reduce by a half. So I'm gonna crank this down to extremely low Shut it down, and nature's calling, so I'll be right back, okay? Come on, Dean, I need someone to hold it for me. Okay, guys, this is coming together just the way it should. We got a beautiful, vibrant red cabbage braise here with apples, cinnamon. Oh, look at that, that's amazing. Sweet, sour, it's gonna be a fantastic foil for the richness of this, uh, the quail that we're gonna throw on here in a second. Got our pistachio and wild rice pancakes. We set that right on top there like that. And we have our rested quail here. That. And one more. Okay. Got our beautiful shallot and raisin sauce. Put it on the top there. And a little bit of the juice around the plate. Okay. Oh, wow, they look great. So I passed the test, I hope. The color is amazing, they smell terrific, and it's just such a romantic dish. Will you pair that up with your homemade wine and you can't lose? You gotta try these Can I things try out. these? These look great. Let me know what you think. Normally you can't get a woman to drink bourbon, but in this case, I think this is an exception. Mm. That's amazing, isn't it? It just melts in your mouth. What a sexy dessert. That's because we're red, hot, and sexy, baby. The home of smoky goodies.